Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. About seven years ago, I did a study on the body of Moses. And uh, before I broke down and bought a microphone, I was doing slideshows. So I've been doing these Bible studies for mm, at least seven years on YouTube. Um, of course, I was doing some ministry work in the 90s and in the 2000s, but I um, actually had a radio show a couple times, had one down here in South Florida, and uh, had one up in Kentucky. Of course, really wasn't fruitful, so, but I'm surprised, you know, I, I really am. Um, YouTube, I didn't know how it would work, and uh, so far, so good, but uh, one day they'll boot me off, I'm sure. They're going to boot everybody off. Can't have Jesus on YouTube, you know, or somebody that uh, speaks about Jesus too much. So, with that in mind, let's get going. Now, let's take a look at the book of Jude. Now, if memory serves me correctly, uh, Jude was the brother of James, who was the son of Mary and Joseph. Oh yeah. I believe I believe James and Jude, if memory serves me correctly, are grew up with Christ. Boy, would that be a tough uh <laughs> can you can you imagine uh your mother saying, Well, why can't you be like your older brother Jesus? you know. I don't know. Uh, so, enough of that. Jude chapter 1, verse 1. Well, there's only one chapter in Jude, so. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ, and brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father, and preserved in Jesus Christ, and called, mercy unto you, and peace, and love, be multiplied. Beloved, when I give all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Listen carefully. I'm going to make this a part two, um, a two-part uh, Bible study, because I'm going to just do Jude chapter 1. And then we're going to go to the body of Moses in part two. Verse four. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. Did you know that there are men of old condemned ordained to condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. How do they turn the grace of God into lasciviousness? Lasciviousness means, you know, gross, wicked sin. How do they do that? Well, they tell people, well, you know, you, you said a 30-second sinner's prayer. And once saved, always saved, eternal security. No matter what you do, you're going to heaven. Uh, you can be a hit man for the mafia, doesn't matter. You know, and I hear that job pays really well, you know. Uh, kill a guy on Thursday, and then on Sunday go to church and praise the Lord. And then 
Tuesday you get another job and kill somebody else. It don't matter. You're eternally secure. You're going to go to heaven. Doesn't matter. Have you ever heard that? I mean, I don't believe that. But um, have you ever had people tell you the law was nailed to the cross? What law? Well, how about the blood sacrifice ceremonial law of the, of the Levites? Now, that was nailed to the cross because it was fulfilled in Christ. But were the, um, well, t you got the Ten Commandments, and I say they're the, the two commandments. Jesus said, uh, love the Lord and love thy neighbor, and on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. And I'm paraphrasing, but, you know, so were those nailed to the cross? Absolutely not. You know, so now you know how they turn grace into lasciviousness. They tell you that the laws were nailed to the cross, and the motto of the church of Satan and the witches is, do what thou wilt, you know, shall be the whole of the law. In other words, if it feels good, do it. So, if you don't like somebody, kill them, get rid of them. That's the whole of the law to the church of Satan and to the witches. So, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Huh. And I think that's what the Hebrew roots people are doing. But that's my opinion. Maybe not all of them, you know, but the ones that I've seen, ugh, I don't trust them. Verse 5, I will therefore put you in remembrance that ye once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. Now, can you believe that? All the plagues that God sent to Egypt, and then he showed them all the miracles. They're in the middle of a desert. They're getting, manna, they're getting fed by manna every day. They're in the middle of a desert. There's water coming from the rock. Okay? I mean, come on, people. I mean, you know, they didn't, they didn't believe the Lord. And then what did they want to do? Oh, let's make a golden calf and worship it. Really? Are you people that stupid? Yeah, they are. You know, we exist for... God's pleasure. And the least we can do is show gratitude. You know, honor him, gratitude. I mean, how hard is that? Evidently, for a lot of people, it's too hard. I don't know. So, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. Verse 6. And the angels, which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation. Well, that's in Revelation, I think Revelation 12, where Satan and his angels were cast out of heaven. Oh, yeah. But left their own habitation. He, God, he hath reserved into everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Now remember, he's talking about the angels that left their first estate. They left their habitation, they're reserved into everlasting chains, unto darkness, unto the judgment of the great day. Verse 7. Remember, the thought, the theme has not changed. And the angels would kept not their first estate. Verse 7, even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth 
for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Tie this into Genesis chapter 6, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how true it is, but according to legends, the fallen angels taught uh, mankind about sodomy. Now, the Bible doesn't say that, but I kind of get that gist when uh, I read verse 7. Did the fallen angels teach mankind about sodomy? I, you know, wouldn't surprise me. Uh, I can't say that's the truth because the Bible's not clear enough, but it seems like it's alluding to that. Verse 8. Likewise also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh. Well, that's what sodomy is, right? Despise dominion. And that has probably reference to uh, God-ordained government. And speak evil of digni dignities. And I think that's speaking of uh, government officials. Now, here's the punchline. This is what the next um, Bible study is going to be on. Yet Michael, the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses. Huh. Why is Michael and the devil contending, uh, disputing about the body of Moses? Well, stay tuned to part two and I will explain it to you. It's really quite simple. Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. Even Michael the archangel wouldn't bring a railing accusation against the devil. But he said, The Lord rebuke thee. Oh boy. Verse 10. But these speak evil of those things which they know not, but what they know naturally as brute beasts. In those days they corrupt themselves. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain. What was Cain's sin? Well, murder. He murdered Abel. But also, he dishonored the Lord by bringing fruit when he should have been bringing a, a blood sacrifice. So, I mean, it was more than murder. But when you think about it, I mean, wasn't uh, Abel made in the image of God? I mean, that's why, that's why murder is such a, a bad thing in the Lord's eyes. We were made in God's image. So for somebody to kill uh, another person, you're killing something in the image of God. Think about that. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain and ran greedily after the error of Balaam for reward. Now, Balaam was a prophet of God, but he left to because they offered him enough gold and silver, I guess. And I just recently did a Bible study on that, if you're a new listener and you're interested. Um, it's probably within the last 10 videos that I've done. And ran greedily after the heir of Balaam for reward and perished in the gainsaying of Cori, or Korah. Uh, Korah was a Levite priest. He was challenging the authority of Moses. Now, let me tell you something, people. When God gives somebody a job to do, you don't want to challenge them because you're not challenging Moses. He wasn't challenging Moses. He was challenging God's authority. So what happened to Korah and his family? Well, the earth opened up, they fell into a pit, and then the earth closed up on them. So if you thought you were going to throw a rope down there to pull them out of the pit, 
sorry, didn't happen. Uh, that's the Lord giving them a burial. Not only of the flesh, but possibly of the spirit. Uh, that's what, when you hear somebody say they're twice dead, double destruction, once in the flesh, once in the spirit. I shuddered the first time I heard, read where David spoke of destroy them with double destruction. That's scary, people. That's scary. Uh, did you ever wonder why in the Bible it says that Babylon is fallen? Is fallen? Babylon, in the physical sense, fell. I forget what chapter it is and verse, but in Isaiah, it says that uh, Babylon would be destroyed and would never be inhabited. And that was before, that was before, uh, I think, I believe it was before Judah went into captivity with Babylon, or maybe as they were going into captivity, or had just gone into captivity in Babylon. The Lord had used Isaiah to tell him that Babylon would be destroyed and never be inhabited again. And what did Saddam Hussein want to do? He wanted to rebuild Babylon. Didn't work, did it? You don't want to do something that the Lord doesn't want. All right, so if physical Babylon's destroyed, then there's the spiritual Babylon. That's why in the book of Revelation it says, uh, Babylon has fallen, has fallen. Matter of fact, let, let me take a look at that. I want to prove my point. Isaiah 13 and verse 19. And Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldees' excellency, shall be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. It shall never be inhabited. It shall never be inhabited. Neither shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation. Neither shall the Arabian pitch tent there. Neither shall the shepherds make their fold there. But wild beasts of the desert shall lie there, and their houses shall be full of doleful creatures, and owls shall dwell there, and satyrs shall dance there. What's a satyr? Uh, have you ever heard of the god Pan? In I think it's Greek, or maybe it's Roman, Greco-Roman. It's uh, from the waist down, it's a goat, and from the waist up, it's a man. Uh, perhaps you've seen Baphomet, if you know what that is. Uh, it's a satanic symbol. From the waist down, it's a goat. From the waist up, it's a man. But it has breasts like a woman. And it's got like a goat's head. And it's got one hand facing up and the other hand facing down. As above, so below. Yeah, a mockery of God. Every single time. All right, in Revelation 18 and verse 2. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the Great is fallen, is fallen. Once physically, once spiritually. Babylon the Great has fallen, has fallen, and has become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. And if you're interested in knowing what the Bible says about where Mystery Babylon is, leave me a comment. I'll be more than happy to prove it to you from the Bible alone. I don't care what people say. It doesn't matter to me what they say. Oh, well, you know, it's 
USA, it's New York City, it's Mecca, it's Istanbul, Turkey, it's, uh, you know, Rome. What does the Bible say? That's the only thing that really matters to me. What does the Bible say? And I can prove it to you from the Bible if you believe it. Let's go back to Jude chapter 1, verse 11. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain and ran greedily after the heir of Balaam for reward and perished in the gainsaying of Korah. Cori. Verse 12. These are spots in your feasts of charity. When they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. You know, these devils should fear us, but they don't. Feeding themselves without fear. Clouds are, uh, clouds they are without water, carried about of winds. Trees whose fruit withereth without fruit, twice dead. Twice dead. They're dead spiritually and physically. Twice dead. Plucked up by the roots. And what happens when you pluck up a plant by the roots? It dies. Raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame, wandering stars. Oftentimes the Bible uses stars as a figure of speech for angels. Wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Can you say ungodly again? These are murmurs, complainers, and God hates complaining. Walking after their own lusts, and their mouth speaking speaketh great swelling words, having men's person in admiration because of advantage. But, beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how that they told you that there should be mockers in the last time who would walk after their own ungodly lusts. Now, if you don't believe me that stars are sometimes referred to as angels, uh, you can read Job 38, specifically in uh, verse 7. It says, When the morning stars sang together. Okay, do stars up in the sky sing? No, it's a figure of speech. You know, when you hear a guy say, wow, look at that girl, she's a fox. I mean, you know, it's a figure of speech, right? And I say that because everybody knows that one. So, at least all the guys, anyways. And girls, if you got a, a, a brother, I'm sure you've heard him say it too. So, when the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Hmm. Think about that when you read Genesis 6 about the sons of God marrying the daughters of men. All right, so let's take a look at Revelation real quick. Ah, here we go. Boy, I proved this without even, uh, well, to God's glory. I, I hadn't even thought about this. Revelation 1, verse 16. And he, Jesus, and he had in his right hand seven stars. Okay, so the Lord's got seven stars in his right hand. And out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. Obviously figures of speech, right? And his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. Skip to Revelation 1 and verse 20. So go from 16 to 20. This is the explanation, the interpretation. 
the mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. And the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. So, then in Revelation 12, 4, uh, speaking of the dragon, and his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be to see, uh, delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Now, stars don't always mean angels, but sometimes it's used as a figure of speech. Uh, remember, Satan's called an angel of light. What do stars put out? Yeah. All right. Job 1, verse 16. These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lusts, and their mouth speaking speaketh great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. Um, but, beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how that they told you there should be mockers, mockers in the last time, who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. Haven't you ever heard people that are pushing this evolution stuff, how they mock Christians? Have they ever seen a, a lump of goo turn into a fish? No. And they never will. Verse 19. These be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the Spirit. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying, praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy, mercy, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And of some have compassion, making a difference. And others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire. Hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. That's right, we're supposed to, to help save others with fear. Pulling them out of the fire. That's what somebody did to me. I'm sure those people are dead now. They were quite elderly when I was a youngster 30 years ago. And I hope, uh, I, hope I get to meet them in the not-too-distant future. Pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. All right, this is part one of the body of Moses. Part two is coming up. I'll finish it up probably tomorrow. Um... All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world and the Eternal Father, all one God, world without end, all glory, praise, and honor to them. In Jesus' name, amen.